Welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I've always had a soft spot for this movie. And I'm Gary, and today we're going to review and discuss The Core, which released in 2003 from writers Cooper Lane and John Rogers and directed by John Emile. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows Dr. Josh Keyes, played by Aaron Eckhart. He has come forward with the information to the government that the Earth's core has stopped spinning and the electromagnetic field that protects the Earth will disappear in under a year and kill all life on the Earth. The government decides to get together a group of well-known scientists and send them to the Earth's core with a special machine and a bunch of nukes to try to save the human race. Okay, if I decide to do this, I'm gonna need an unlimited supply of xenotapes and hot pockets. Hot pockets? They help me concentrate. Man, I've kind of uh, loved this film <laughs> since yeah. its original release. So, you know, no surprises here that it's going to be a favorable <laughs> review from me with right. this one. Uh, this is one of those disaster films that I always bring up that when everyone's talking about the Poseidon adventure, yeah. uh, Armageddon, Deep Impact, yeah, Towering, uh, Towering Inferno, Inferno yeah. just any earthquake, any of those disaster movies, I'm always like, no one ever brings up the, the, the core. core. Yeah. I, I always think it's an awesome movie. I mean, it's definitely, for me, one of those Sunday afternoon type of movies. Sure. I mean, I didn't realize at first before the review that it's like two hours and 15 minutes long. But then I remembered as I was watching it, the reasons why, you know, you need at least a good hour to set up the story, the background, these characters, and then you need at least another hour of good action and adventure involving these scientists. Um, but... I was saying this, this to you before we turned the camera on. For me, this is like deep impact. Okay. You know, it's it's definitely not hit the heights as, say, Armageddon. You know, it doesn't have that really famous musical song that plays, like, all fucking year round. It doesn't has, have Michael Bay-style explosions. Style explosions, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have these huge, massive names leading us right off the bat, like Willis and stuff. I mean, I, I like Aaron Eckhart, you know. He's, he's my Harvey Dent because sure. of The Dark Knight. You know, I, I do have a bit of a sweet spot for Hilary Swank. I think she's done some she's done some really great roles, but then she's been handed some humdingers that she's for sure. She's managed to make work. But yeah. the films are still Ever since her appearance in Million Dollar Baby, I've, oh. I've kind of just loved everything that she's been in since. I just, yeah, I really like Hilary Swank and think she's a standout in this too. Yeah, um man, I loved her in Boys Don't Cry. Yeah, you nice. know, such yeah. an amazing performance. I mean, we've got the wonderful Stanley Tucci. Yes. <laughs> and he's, like, definitely one of the top reasons to watch this movie. He is a really good actor. He's a standout in this. And he is an insufferable douchebag <laughs> throughout. But he does still have elements of humanity which make him a nice, well-rounded character. Yeah. Because uh, this film does one of those things that I'm, I, I'm surprised at, really. Because usually in a disaster movie or in a... You know, sci-fi adventure, there's usually, like, one character who's going to be villainous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I like that, for the most part, all of the characters in this will work together to overcome the obstacle. They will have fallings out, but none of them will all of a sudden turn villainous. Yeah. I mean, it's got some strange science behind it. I mean, we, oh, really? <laughs> well, well, we start with that sequence, don't we, where you got these uh, group of friends in this board meeting getting ready to make $30 million, and as they walk out... You know, the guy in front of them just keels over and dies. Now, you kind of hear that kind of weird electromagnetic kind of whine. And, like, I've seen it a couple of times, but you realise that everybody who has died mysteriously here all had pacemakers. Well, that's when they call in Aaron Eckhart, who's playing um, Josh, along with... It's either Checky or Techy Cario, who plays Serge, yeah, uh, the yeah. French guy who's a weapons specialist. Yeah. And so Eckhart's just like, well, if you're here and I'm here, then clearly it's going to be pacemakers that were taken out. And the, the general's just <laughs> like, under a minute, your reputation precedes you. You can go home now. And he's just like, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, look, look, where's the equal sign to all of this? Well, they're worried that it might have been a weapon. You know, they they were worried that um, Richard Jenkins, I think it is, that guy playing playing the commander, um, he, he thought it might have been a weapon targeting them. Um, but as it's just affected all these people with pacemakers, it must be some kind of electromagnetic disturbance. 
I just got a small issue to bring up like, from, <laughs> okay, from, yeah. from the beginning of him. Like, yeah. one, one of the earlier shots is pretty great. So the camera goes through the O of the core of the title. Oh, yeah, we, yeah. We get the Earth, yeah, and yeah. then we get the spiral of oh. the carousel going yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. And then we get the guy's watch. But straight away, I'm looking at that watch, and I'm like, something's wrong already. Like, it's one of the first shots of the film. I'm like, that watch is wrong. Why? Like, at the half past, but it's half ten on his watch, right? Okay, yeah. But the hour mark is firmly on the ten. I was like, if it was half ten, the, the half hour mark would be between the ten <laughs> no, and eleven. Yeah. So I was like, right. so I the, one of the Man. first close-ups of this film, and I'm like, there's something wrong. You picked right there, didn't you? You were watching. <laughs> I may have seen this film a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like, the little things is what's going to stand out for me now. I mean, for me, yeah, I, I would say the same thing with, like, the effect, really, of of the, the camera shot as it looks out onto the city, where... You know, like I said, in Armageddon, you had that thing come down and annihilate half a city and the guy with the dog. Saddam Hussein's bomb. Oh, us, oh you, know, Saddam, <laughs> you know, um, we had the same thing in Deep Impact with like the, the, the first few rocks coming in. It was kind of action-y. But with this, you just see the camera pan and it's, it is honestly just a set of people all in random things. You've got the kids crying and people running to call the police. I actually thought it was uh, a really realistic kind of look i like that there was just little pockets yeah, but, of but it's disaster all, that had happened but it's so small yes like i know, said, I know it's all the scale captured on this small. so that's small. What I thought. it made it feel a little bit more believable a little bit more realistic even yeah in its depiction of I mean, what's going on it will get bigger i mean there's yes. an event later which is like fucking kind of outstanding <laughs> Um, but yeah, Josh Keys and his friend Serge have, uh, have come forward. They've spoken to the commander, um, but then they've been, just been sent away again um, because these these things are still only just happening. So we do get Hilary Swank uh, playing Major Rebecca Childs, um, but they all call her Beck. And she's on board um, her own shuttle Endeavour with Captain Christopher Pike. <laughs> and like... He's a great actor. Bruce Greenwood, yeah. Yeah, and he plays this part really well. But I've watched Star Trek too much. Sure. And so this whole kind of character he's playing here in 2003, you know, is basically to her Kirk. You know, he's like, you're not in command yet. I'm still flying this shuttle because, well, you know. And you're thinking, man, Kirk, calm down. You know, she only really suggested about flying in, but he's in charge. And so then as they're starting to come in, which is really quite a cool shot um it gets affected by electromagnetic waves and they realize they're they're about to go off course and so she's there like uh sir i may have a suggestion he's like no i'll wait for nasa and she's like okay then nasa's just like no we don't know you know <laughs> and she's just like uh sir i may have an alternative he's like well i don't know i'm still in command here and nasa is just like uh you might want to listen to her and he's just like what's the alternative she's like well if you turn this way to the right we can land in the in the remnants of the L.A. River, which is basically their huge kind of storm drain. Kind She's of. just a huge fan of Terminator 2. <laughs> yeah, well, look at everybody use it. But I thought that shot was actually pretty cool as well. You know, it's 2003, so we are looking at 20 years at least. There was a, a reason why um, they actually land in the, uh, in the canal. Because they originally wanted to land at the L.A. airport. Right, but right. Nine Eleven had just occurred, yes. and so they said no filming here. So they had to come up with something else, which I think is a is a really great stunt. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the whole the, the emergency of do we drop the landing gear? We'll lose control, but we're going too fast. But we've got no control, and all the way up to when it stops right in front of the the construction <laughs> worker, always that guy. He just turns around and it's like whoa. It's always that one guy who's like, I didn't hear you running, <laughs> yeah. you know. But I thought what was quite cool is, and this from obviously experience of watching it a lot, is that what we're seeing now is kind of what we will see later on. You know, them in just inside this vehicle that really has no control. Like, I've never really looked into space travel before, but realizing that when they're coming down, they're literally coming down. You oh, know, oh yes. they can't maneuver or break they can jets. Glide. Or gl yeah, they can glide or crash. Right. That, that's it. So th then... But for me, the film's doing it really well. It's establishing who our characters yeah. are. We've, we've, we've had Josh in his classroom being taken away by the government. Yeah. We, we've had Beck you know, crash landing and saving the crew and not causing any casualties and being heralded as a hero in front of the board. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're telling her, like, we've got a, we've got a new job for you. She gets sent away. 
Uh, and of course, we'll know where she's going to be sent soon because Josh is still figuring things out. And he's come to the conclusion that the core of the Earth has stopped spinning. And so he goes to see uh, Zimski, yeah. who is played by Stanley Tucci, who, of course, dismisses him at first. He's like way too popular. He's like, he's like just signs these documents. He's like, no, I need you to read them. Yeah. Um, and uh, he eventually works with him and comes to the conclusion like I can't admit this because it's insanity yeah but it, at the same time I mean this is after we've had the, the the Trafalgar Square sequence where all the pigeons around uh, I think in Nelson's column you know around uh, London have just gone absolutely crazy and so that's where Aaron Eckhart's p- pieced it all together like right the electromagnetic field's not doing what it's supposed to do and he's gone to Zimsky and he's gone hey Stanley Tucci like this is what I figured out. Stanley Tucci at first goes, oh, uh, you know, you're crazy. But then we watch him go into his kind of secret lab back door with his hidden drawer. And he opens up this thing and pulls out this envelope that says Project Destiny. Which, you know, we'll we'll find out. But spoilers, it's something the government shouldn't be messing with. And guess what? Stop the earth spinning. Well... <laughs> you know what that Trafalgar Square needed more of? What? Trout. <laughs> right. If you look very carefully, when all of the birds, the pigeons, are flying against the windows, right. you might spot a fish in there too. <laughs> Why? This scene in Trafalgar Square took six months for the CGI guys to put in all the pigeons oh, and make shit. them feel real. Oh, yeah. Six months to do that, but I guess they kind of got a little bit tired of looking at pigeons at some point. And two of the pigeons are actually trout fish that fly up against the window. Um, Yeah, it's hilarious. I was watching that sequence and I was like, wow, it's really good that they superimposed these birds onto the sequence. Yeah, there's a couple of fish in there too. Uh, But yeah, the whole film got delayed like five months in order for the special effects team to do all the CGI work in the film. I know it's it's a long, laborious task. And unfortunately, some of that CGI work has started to date now. But the pigeon scene in Trafalgar Square looks pretty effective. Yeah, I mean, the effects for me always seemed a little bit kind of ropey. Bit even cheap. back for 2003, like I said, Deep Impact kind of cheap style. Um, but that's what gave the movie a bit of heart. So now when I'm watching it 2023, I'm, I'm looking at the effects. And I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, of course that building in, in Rome is obviously made out of polystyrene. And, <laughs> and that's another great sequence because... Once, you know, once Josh and, and Serge and, and Zimski have all got together, they, they've come up with the idea that, yes, the Earth's core has stopped spinning. Um, there's really no way to get down there. And Zimski's like, ah, actually, I might know a guy. And so they go out to the desert and they meet up with uh, Delroy Lindo, who's playing Dr. Ed Bra- Brazelton. And Brazelton has come up with he's developing predator technology yeah like a super (laughs) fucking laser he's developed a super laser to just cut through the mountain and so they're like right okay how long will you need to make this and he's like well i'll need like was it 10 years or something 10 years and 15 you know yeah 10 years to develop it on my normal on my normal income and so Richard Jenkins is like, how much? How do you do it in three months? Yeah. I don't need he's like, like, well, 15, 15 million. billion. Yeah. <laughs> Get a credit card out and they, and now we're. Well, here's the thing I want to bring up, the jokes. Right. Because the moment he's like, I'll write you a check. Yeah. And Josh is like, get a credit card, you get more air miles. <laughs> I'm just like, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Was that a joke? Like, yeah. it was so awkward yeah. because the, yeah. the, the, the major, he just, he just goes. <laughs> I'm just like. Was this a commercial? Like, did we just cut to commercial in the middle of the film? Uh, but there's loads of one-liners like that throughout the script. And I like it because this is a family movie, really. It's yeah, a PG yeah. movie. Yeah. Yes, there's peril and tension and people are going to die. But if the characters occasionally make it light, mm-hmm. am I having the odd jokes? Like, establish the odd jokes here and now. So when they come in during the, like, the worst possible times, yeah, yeah. it kind of breaks some of the tension a little bit and... Eases eases the audience back in to be able to enjoy the rest of the adventure, despite yeah. you know the horribleness. Yeah. So, but I think this film actually strikes a very fine balance. Sometimes, though, I will go like groan worthy. Yeah. Like the air miles. I, I groan quite a bit as well when we were watching Aaron Eckhart and Hilary Swank kind of have their relationship. But, Are you sure? But it's it's not because they're bad at it. It's because a it's kind of predictable. Um, well, I think there's an honest actual chemistry between the, the two actors yeah well to be well, i mean they got fairly intimate as in aaron eckhart vomited on on hillary swank during uh one of the scenes in the film it's obviously not in the film but uh, in rehearsals when they're in the gyroscopic thing yeah, being shook yeah. around aaron eckhart got shook around so much he literally vomited on the back of hillary swank's oh, head man. um some people have said you can still see bits of the sick on his chin but my eyes see that's what i feel as well though is that like even though their their relationship's kind of predictable and you like the 
But what they, were you going to say? I was just going to say, I, mean, I don't <laughs> want to jump to the end, right. but I like the fact that, yes, they have a... They could have a romance, but they don't in this film. Yeah. It, it's not boy gets girl at end kind of thing, you know? It's it, kind of like they both have an respect for each other. Well, that's what it, I was going to say, because it works with the Brazelton and Zimsky kind of relationship as well. Yeah. They've got a bit of a history, but they don't go into it. But the way that Delroy Lindo kind of works, and sure. he's bouncing off of Stanley Tucci, you know, their whole relationship really works, that they're old buddies that fell out, but now they're back together trying to save the world. You know, the surge... Um, Josh kind of relationship I'm not entirely sure on because obviously I like you know I like Chesky Caro as, a, as an actor and he plays his parts very well but he's trying to hammer home that he's got two little girls and he's got to save his wife we, ne- we don't see them at all through the movie well except in a picture in a, in a picture yeah so is he separated from them you know he works for the government all this kind of stuff but you know Daryl Lindo's is like hey guys we've got three months and we're going to build all this thing and i like that little gyroscopic kind of uh, situation yeah, yeah. yeah the, the the scene because like you said it breaks the breaks the tension because they're all bouncing around inside and you just you're thinking fuck is it gonna be like that when we go down and you've got surge bouncing around like Haha, we're all gonna die this is a disaster, <laughs> is a disaster. you know he doesn't care uh, the montages the film has uh, several montages <laughs> yeah, like we, we cut three months they're building the virgil ship they're attaching the lasers they're you know we get scenes where where josh is like, he's like, oh, I built this, you know? Yeah. I, I, this is how we're going to navigate. This is your guidance system. Yeah, yeah. And I, it's like, Hillary Swank, she, Beck, she just comes up, she just like, starts turning dials and knobs. Yeah. And she's like, well, I know you invented this, but I'm a NASA pilot, so clearly <laughs> yeah, I know this like, better than you. And I'm like, okay, come on, movie. Like, it's just written like that. Yeah, like you said, the, 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 over the montage, it's like, we're going to explain to you in every new sequence what we're looking at and how it works so that you know exactly how it works in the next sequence. And you're like, okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a lot of science to digest, so I'm glad they break it down for idiots. Where he's, he's got that scene in front of all the generals, and he's he's got an apple because like they the, yeah. pe- the peach didn't work, so they took an apple, coloured it, and put a peach stone in the middle of it. <laughs> right, okay. And he's like, "Get me an aerosol," and he sets fire to it, and drops it in the water. I'm like, "Oh, I understand now." Yeah. I mean, we've got Donald Joseph Quayles playing Finch, or better known as the Rat, and it's like. We're still in 2003, so the internet's still kind of... Still new. Still new. But this kid has got everything. He's hacked the FBI. He's hacked Interpol. And for the next three months, while they're building the super train to go into the Earth, he's going to be hacking the internet. Hack the planet! Hack the planet. And keeping all information of, of Project Virgil off of the web, you know, and just hope that nobody looks up and questions why the sky's purple... Um, to the point where they start to get super storms, which ends up destroying Rome. Right. But we also get that super fucking awesome sequence over the bridge of San Francisco. Well, this is towards the the, <laughs> the end of the film when things are really heating up. Yeah. And nice. Yeah. The uh, I mean, it's the Golden Gate Bridge. It's iconic. Yeah. It's been destroyed in all, over and over <laughs> yeah, and over yeah. again. Uh, but yeah, it's it's one of, like when the guy gets burnt instantly. Yeah. It's like oh my god, and then we see the bridge disintegrate and melt as everybody falls in, and it's all the cars falling off the back of the bridge <laughs> all the as screams. people scream as screams. they go into it I was like oh my shit. god because there's kids screamed women men just I swear I heard a dog bark <laughs> sure <laughs> Uh, but it's all building up to launch day, and they're going to yeah. launch over the ocean, over the Mariana Trench, yeah. because apparently, according to Zinsky, yeah. uh, that that's going to be the softest bedrock of the ocean, so that the lasers will just plow right through it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I I love like NASA takeoffs. You know, they're always excellent, but I I do feel like the countdown in this film was lacking a bit of momentum. Yeah. Uh, but uh, lo and behold, the countdown goes, and down they drop, and. This is where we are into the the second act of the film now. Yeah. The adventure really begins because we've had all of the training, we've seen all the failed simulated runs, and yeah. so now it's for real. Well, that's it. We we've also got uh, Alfre Woodard playing uh, Doctor Talma Stickley, who's going to be like our commander in chief in control. You know, she's talking to them, communicating with them, and they're you know they're just follow navigating them from NASA while they what they 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 they. they break down through the Mariana Trench, don't they? They go straight through. They pass some whales. And then they've got to get to the mantle to work to the outer core and then try to set the nukes off near the inner core. And I, I, I've I, got to admit, I, I absolutely love 
just the design of this other world. Like we've gone into space a million times and destroyed asteroids and stuff and shit like that. But not many people have dug through the earth. You know, and so we're watching just this bullet train with a huge fucking laser on the front just kind of punch itself through all different types of material, you know, turning it all into kind of molten lush, uh, slush. I love the way that, like, they break through the ground and then they immediately sealed up behind them. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and so they're, they're just right through. And so then we're seeing it through the sensor, sensor room. And Hilary Swank's just like, well, I know, like you said, like, um, black or you know black is too solid for the lasers to to, to go through it's iron yeah so we, we need to find a way around we have it to go around it uh, but it's also like he's explained like he didn't actually explain to the robot uh with the to the scanner what empty space was so it comes up as static on the terminal yeah and i'm like now wait a minute we we saw you with the device with all of the empty <laughs> space <so laughs> on the vase <laughs> so how did you not program empty space because it's like the fly, dude. You know, they don't have time to program everything. He, you know, oh, right. he had three months and a relationship with Hilary Swank to work on, so he didn't have time to go empty space. So they plow right into a giant chasm. It's, yeah, it's, it's a giant crystal geode it's, it's, that it's, they've plowed into. They crash land into, and part of the crystal gets wedged in front of the, the engine, the, the laser grid at the front. Man, I wanted to play Dark Souls so bad. <laughs> the crystal, crystal caverns. Yeah. I was like, "Well, but the idea of it as well is like they could have the movie could have easily just avoided all going outside of the super train. You know, we're just literally just going back and forth, and a little bit of CGI showing it plowing through whatever it needs to avoid this, dodge that. I mean, the action sequences we see with the train, you know, are brief, but they're just enough to give you keep you on the edge of your seat. Like they've just got to keep going, and so when you do get them to plow out of nothing and then they hit the ground and they've got to go out in their little space suits and they're looking around it's it's really quite cool because you know the way they explain it it's like this is actually still in the earth they're still on the ground they're just in this kind of yeah bubble there is a moment in this film that is absolutely hilarious you you probably will miss it on your right. first first viewing of it but there is a moment where Aaron Eckhart breaks character because he, he fucked up. Right, right. Now, when when you watch this scene back, obviously we're going to edit and show you this as well, but when they crash into yeah. the last crystal, everyone in their harnesses and seats lurches forward and crashes back into their seats. Yeah, yeah. Except Josh, except Aaron Eckhart, who sits there and he watches everybody do it, and then he turns to the side and he goes, oh, fuck. <laughs> Because he missed his cue, and that's that's the take that they used in the uh, film. Uh, so when you watch it back, you're just like, it's just watching them go. Yeah, oh, fuck, I missed everyone doing the thing. <laughs> okay. That's that's. But cool. yeah, they decide now that they've got to go outside in yeah. these suits and cut away at the at the at the crystal that's in the way. And we get this whole dramatic moment where the the the, the tools running out of oxygen or, yeah. or nitrogen to, to power it. Uh, yeah, the geodes oxygen, cracked yeah, open yeah. and the lava is is piling in. And they're like, we've desperately got to cut away this crystal so we can get back in and, and get out of here. And we notice this is where again I'm like, is this the writers, the characters? Like, it's another stupid moment yeah. where the lava is destroying and melting all the crystals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yet they're like, we've got to cut this crystal out of the engine. Like, why? Just get back on Virgil. The lava will melt this crystal that's in your engine. Well, get I mean, in. They and they're like, no, we've got to cut it. And do that's... they want to get out of the lava and get no, away? No, because... I mean, um, the unob the, it's unobtainium. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. This, 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 this is like six is... years before Avatar. Yeah, six years before Avatar, this ship was made out of unobtainium. The ship is made out of unobtainium. So when yeah. people go, oh, it's stupid, an Avatar is made out of un unobtainium, I'm like, I've not seen the core, mate. Well... It does exist. T t well, I mean, no, I mean, unobtainium doesn't exist, but well, I mean, no. it, the term unobtainium has been around since the 1950s. Right. And engineers oh, right. yeah. would use the term unobtainium for a material that doesn't exist that they need in order to oh, reinforce right. or make what it is they want to make. That's why it exists, because it At doesn't exist. At one point, exist. steel was known as unobtainium because it was impossible to get hold of yeah. at some point. So, yeah. But yeah, the unobtainium in this is a material that. <clears throat> The hotter it gets, or the more pressure that's put upon it, the stronger it is. 
So the closer they get to the core, the stronger the hull of the ship is going to be. Right. Yeah, magic. It's unless magic. It, unless it's <laughs> breached, because obviously... Unless it's breached, and then they have to jettison, they jettison sections. They jettison the sections. But at, at this moment as well, while the lava's coming down, and the crystal is needing to be cleared, this is where our, our amazing Captain Pike uh, decides to have an inspirational chat to everybody in the middle of this death-dealing situation, and that's where he gets headshotted by a piece of crystal. Yes! Bob? It's a pretty cool death. Yeah, he has stands there for a moment before he falls onto the lava and gets submerged under it. And I'm like, God damn it, scientists! Like, <laughs> he would float! On top. Would he? <clears throat> yes. Oh. It's the same as Terminator 2. He wouldn't submerge. He would float on the top. Oh, I never. Because <laughs> the molten steel is, uh, the molten lava is, is dense. It's thick. It's heavy. But so wouldn't he... it, yeah, but wouldn't it just melt through him? And then Eventually, he... but he wouldn't just submerge like he was going in, you know, in a swimming pool. You know, it's completely different. See, I've never seen but anybody melt death... in lava, so I wouldn't know. It's it's, <laughs> it's just a completely pointless death when they could have all just got on because yeah they cut away the thing yeah. they get on but he had to Josh be had to Bex, pass out he had to be Bex's lesson yeah he did and, he and did Josh it, had to... it, the thing is it's the skeleton tropes it's like you have to have your red shirts you have to have your characters yeah. Yeah. that die along the way to up the ante the peril the drama the tension because because that. that's it this whole next hour like we said it could have just been easy that the train goes flying through the earth and they drop the nukes off and then they come home but it's overcoming all the obstacles and problems yeah that they didn't expect yeah because they've they've got to deal with um as well because they. It's, is it they're in the weapons room? They they go they they go into the weapons room and they're just like, you know, Beck's just like, where are you guys? We're in the weapons room, chilling with these nukes. She's like, oh, oh my god, there's a room for you know dangerous crystals. Instead of just calling them straight away and telling them to be you know careful and put the nukes away, maybe so that they can get past the crystals, the guys decide to still. Deal with the nukes what? while the train's flying, trying to dodge all these fucking crystals. I'm like, action, okay. And Beck manages to avoid all the, the diamonds until right at the end where it gets skewered along Last the side. Last one, yeah. Uh, which, of course, causes a hole breach, which causes, unfortunately, Sergei to get stuck behind because he manages to get all of the, the nuclear detonator things through the door well that's it it's the, the last room is the weapons control room yeah so now they've lost it there's no way so they had to get nukes. all the nukes well they had to get all the yeah. nukes to, yeah, to the to the next um the ship uh, the next carriage yeah um but <clears throat> the door was still open enough for him to have been pulled through <laughs> again i'm just like oh god damn it filmmakers you could have just tried just a teeny bit harder on this bit <sighs> because it just makes it seem like I it's my time to die now and i'm okay with this yeah like i that's what i get from it but at the same time i was also thinking like if he even tried to pull him through the way that he might get going, stuck he would get stuck <laughs> yeah, I'm like, and he's live. gonna get cut in half and destroy the entire thing so true 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 but in, it, in a way that, that that's it she, but he didn't try she didn't try well that's it like Aaron Eckhart walks right up the backs and is like screaming at her like no he, I get it. he was right there he was a couple of inches I thought the death sequence was way too long because like he's there and he's just watching Serge and I know Serge isn't actually getting crushed so as the room is kind of closing in on the actor the actor is acting crushed and it's just taking a really really long time you know the actor's probably thinking have you got the shot yet have you got the shot yet because i'm doing my death stare now <laughs> and then we cut to the outside where we see the train and then we see the room get crushed and smashed here. and pulled away and i'm like well you could have done that like 10 seconds ago i don't know it i would have I, had the same impact uh, yeah I, I really felt for him like the the long protracted shot on the camera looking up because you can't see the monitor yeah, he's just looking yeah, blindly like you said about science it wouldn't be like that because if that room has been crushed the circuitry's gone well, the that thing, would be the first it, thing it, gone his head would have popped like a yeah, bloody exactly, melon anyway exactly. just, and they couldn't have blood in it because there's no, a family no. movie so I, I thought it was just right actually I thought it was just right yeah, yeah. So, so with the earth going through its deep shit with the San Francisco bridge being destroyed and the train obviously not only have they I think they've lost contact at this point with Oh, no, no, they, they've still got contact with NASA, but because of the, they've lost the weapons control room, they've got no way to launch the well, nukes. It's not just that. They, they do get to where they need to go to drop the nukes, but they realise that their calculations are wrong and they've not brought enough nukes with them because the density of the area is, is, is so different that yeah. the blast wouldn't... It wouldn't be contained. It would just dissipate into nothing. Yeah. So NASA and 
Zimsky, have yeah. a plan B. Yeah. Well, it's... Project pl- Destiny. It was what has actually caused the problem in the first place. But they're thinking, hey, if we just fire Project Destiny at the Earth's core again, maybe it will restart. And Josh Keyes is just like, or it might cause even worse problems and kill everybody on the planet. At least give us a try before you try to do this. So Richard Jenkins is like, no, I'm going ahead. So we're going to drain the power from uh, most of the most of America and put it into this machine in Alaska and fire this electromagnetic thing at the Earth's core. But luckily they've got the rat who hacks into the mainframe of whatever it is. He sheds a tear at one point because he's panicking. He's, that he's like, not I can't do it. do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. Um, you know, because he's part of the team as well. And he, he sh- shuts the power down. So, um, there were Lindo as well as, as um, convinced Keys and, and Beck to look, look we're just going to have to put the nukes into each one of the compartments and then we're just going to have to launch the compartments off and detonate them that way. And Stanley Tucci has that m- amazing breakdown. Oh, he does. Has, He's like, you're out of your mind. He has such an amazing breakdown. I want to go home. And he gets, <laughs> then he gets punched in the face. Bye, everybody. You want to die like this? You want to die like this? You shut up! But then he, he gets that, like, like I said, you think he's going to be the villain, and it could have been easily him just kind of sabotage something, but there's nowhere for him to go, so he might as well have his moment as well. So I like that bit where he kind of wakes up, and he's figured out what they should do, and he's just like, look, let me smoke a cigarette, and I'll tell you. And you just know that, like, because they're confined in this fucking capsule, there's not much oxygen, so smoking a cigarette's really bad, especially, you know, secondhand smoke. But for this moment, he's like, ah, oh, this is the greatest <laughs> moment of my life. What trapped, a day. Trapped under the earth and all this. And so, Delroy Lindo has to sacrifice himself now to reach the manual override. He pulled help. the short straw. Yeah. <laughs> or he didn't, but he volunteered for this suicide mission anyway yeah where he has to crawl or walk, walk into this yeah. is it under nine thousand fahrenheit temperature room yeah and uh, and manually hit the switches so that they can eject the the uh the the pods yeah uh, one at a time because he was like we built the ship in three months i didn't <laughs> program this yet the thing that annoys me is that a few scenes later we see hillary swank on the bridge controls hitting switches that re- that jettisons each of the the train parts no i i i thought they were well, there was a button later on where she hits a button there's a button that they tap later on the emergency ejection yeah and i'm just like what 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 is this That's a, it. What, who's, what? who's launching these <laughs> things? Well, I, I th- no, I think yeah, I think she was only actually or, able to do that after he'd hit the manual, done the thing. Maybe yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he does actually explain. I think that they're all designed this way so that they won't slow down and destroy the ship once they get the damage. Sure. But now we've got to release them undamaged. It's just if you think about it, it starts to get confusing. Oh so. man, I gave up thinking about this movie when oh, yeah, the pigeons prob- were flying you, you around. They were fish. <laughs> Um, and that's it. Watching Del Rilindo die, and you know they, they they've all got to have their moments. So he, that's quite a harsh death. Just watching this heat just kind of destroy his suit. You know that he's just been melted in it. Even if they do manage to get him back to the door, he's going to be disfigured for fucking life. So they open up a vent, and it just incinerates him. Yeah. And he'd had his speech saying like, "I'm giving, going to give my last of my blood to Virgil because I built this thing." Um, I mean, it's quite sad when you get the Stanley Tucci death. Which at first starts off as the Aaron Eckhart death. Yeah, right, and it does the old <laughs> reversal. Yeah, yeah, where he's pinned under the nuke and he's like, "Yeah, oh, save yourself." Yeah. And then he falls, and the nuke rolls over over Zinsky, and Zinsky's like, "No, you go, <laughs> you go." <laughs> Pushes him through the door, and yeah, it's a uh, it's a it's a cool moment where we cut back to Zinsky after a while, and he's just sat there with his tape recorder. He's yeah. still recording his monologue for his two book deals he's going to get <laughs> when he gets home. I love that sequence. Yeah. What the fuck am I doing? (laughs) I mean, the domino effect of the nukes kind of works. You know, we we see the nukes go off one by one, and then we see the flow go. These... Right. (laughs) The unobtainium, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, what's its power again? Uh, Super heat, super pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're at the core of the fucking planet. Right. These things should be nigh on indestructible right now. Yeah, yeah. But... Yeah, Nick. It's just like, pop. But he... 
Well, the, <laughs> the, the, the nuke's coming from the inside. It's true, it's but still so the same. The, yeah, but, is the inside not built the same as on the outside? Well, well, no. The outside, <laughs> the outside would be lined with monotonium, but the pressure building up because <laughs> the pressure and the heat from the outside is going in. Yeah, right. The inside, the nuclear explosion is going out, so at least they would find cracks through some of the uh, fuel or whatever else they've got inside there. I, oh man, I don't know. <laughs> I spent fucking hours trying to explain fucking a town called Panic to you, and you didn't want to know it. Now you're going to explain fucking science behind nukes and underneath the fucking... Oh, well, it's all you, theoretical man. anyway. Well, yeah, true. Because Aaron Eckhart fucking irradiates himself anyway <laughs> yeah. by pulling out, because Zimsky says to him just before he dies, like... To you make... need 30% more blast on the final explosion. <laughs> yeah. So if you take the plutonium rods that are powering the ship out and you stick them on the nuke and then jettison it and then detonate it, that's more explosion. And so he just he just carries them. Yeah. Like, I didn't know you could do that. I... Well, I mean, he, we were told earlier that the suits could withstand up to 5,000 Fahrenheit. Bro, he's not wearing a helmet. Yeah, I know, but these <laughs> he's wearing gloves. And technically, the... <laughs> well, no, what I'm saying is that... He, even though his hands burn yeah. when he's holding it, yeah. they shouldn't. Because we've already seen, because the that temperature is, of that's colder than where that is, that the other is, guy just went. Is, so I'm just like, God damn true. it, Phil. Just some true. consistency, please. That is true. But that's but, it. Yeah. He, he carries the rods up there and he sticks it onto the nuke. And he sits in the bridge with um, uh, with Hillary Swank. He's wandering around in the dark. Like. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like She's like, where is everybody? I couldn't hear what you were saying. It's just like, you knew what we were swung out the fucking nukes. Oh, by the way, I might be irradiated right now. So if my hair starts so falling hold out, me. <laughs> yeah, hold me. And with the nukes going off, they set off the domino effect, but they know that they're going to get hit by the blast. Um, but Keys comes up with the idea because he's super smart and he's to go figure out everything in this movie. Like, oh, what's the unobtainium fueled by? Heat and pressure. Well, we're surrounded by all that. So if I can hook up some wiring in the quick fucking 12 minutes we've got to hot wire the fucking train you know, we'll just have enough power to, to make the, was it, the, the fucking rotor blade go round, but we'll just have to stay ahead of the, the blast wave. I love the fact that once they power this thing, Hilary Swank finds the perfect escape route out. Well, they could have <laughs> used this to get there. Well, no. I mean, no? we don't show it. We, we are told, like, oh, she navigated and found a gap through the, the, the fault lines. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And but then we see them. like, uh, fucking tubes as but well. But I'm also like, how in the hell did she fly? Like, this thing doesn't have wings. Like, like I just don't understand how it, how the momentum has carried it all the way to the surface. Sup nearly. Well, he's, he supposedly says, because once they get to the, once they get yeah, to the I, water, Yeah, I know where that's where it flop. cools, because there's no more heat right. to power it. But, that, that's what but how saying. did they get that far up? But, I mean, the, the film cuts, I like... Know. No it's one of the things where the finale of this film gets me a little bit, a little bit annoying because I understand why it's edited this way because it takes, the, it took them like 40 hours to get down there. Yeah. So the film's like, we've got to wrap things up. Yeah. So we're just going to go 16 hours later. Bump. There they go. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, oh, okay it's then. It. It's like, so, you know, they didn't run out of oxygen. No, none none no. of that stuff. They just, you know, they just made it. They just sat there in their chairs like... But then they also know that they're sat at the bottom of the ocean yeah. in a in unobtainium, which has no... It's not going to come off sonar, uh, so they've pretty much got to make their peace because a rescue operation would take weeks. Yeah. But no. Rat, yeah. somehow, whose job is finished at this yeah. point, is somehow on this Navy vessel with the crew, and he's just like, oh, I'm so sad. I'm sure they're I'm, down there. If only I, I, wish I could I'd, think. Yeah. I wish I could find my friends. What What... What what is so special about the unobtainium that we what, we dropped in what's the What's one thing that was set up earlier in the film that hasn't had a payoff yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Colonel, we're getting a phone call. It's uh, apparently there's a weird sound at the bottom of the ocean. It's whales. Oh, it's just whales. It's just whale. But they're oh. off course. Isn't that strange? But it's not so strange because what is strange is that it's the sound of humpback whales when we're seeing killer whales. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh well. <laughs> well the, all the whales just come along. Sure. Yeah. You know, but lo and behold, Rats is like, it's whales! It's whales! Yeah. So quick quick edit and they're rescued. Yeah, literally. <laughs> the divers drop down, attach the thing. But these are divers with like snorkels, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, not how, how, divers. how deep did you have to go? 800 feet, apparently. <laughs> well, they managed to pull them out, and then it's a case of, right, okay, the Aaron Eckhart kind of Hillary Swank relationship kind of pays off they might get together but the film doesn't slap you in the face like ben affleck and fucking Liv tyler you know getting together 
Um, but it's the way that they're like, oh, wow, the world's never going to know about the unsung heroes. Is it, I wonder if there's any way that any of this information could just, like, miraculously get out. Wouldn't that be a shame? And then a week later, a week, <laughs> seven days, Rat just walks into a cafe. With, with all of his top secret documents. All of his top secret documents. Which he doesn't need. Info. <laughs> yeah, like like he so he's got this paperwork that he's read and then he's written it all up. I'm guessing, but he's already done that because he's already got it on a CD when he comes in. So he just I'm like, what, what what was the point in that? Well, it, okay, sorry, it was for people not paying attention watching the film. Yeah, I've got, well, I I like the scene that the government took all information from him. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But then he managed to get Stanley Tucci's files and personal files and stuff like that. But and I tell the world. But yeah, but this is still going to get him killed, probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, the film's over. I think yeah, yay, think, yay <laughs> film's over. Destiny. Meet world. World. Meet destiny. Uh, Ian, do you have any favourite scenes from the court? I, I do. I, I have a few. I mean, I do like the action sequences alone. You know, the San Francisco Bridge, the Rome uh, Coliseum, Trafalgar Square. You know, it's, like I said, it's kind of cheap done, like Deep Impact. Um, but it's just enough for the movie to go, look, it's happening all over the world, okay? Everybody's being affected. We can only show you... And just a reminder of the stakes. Yeah, yeah, we can only show you, like, certain countries, but just enough to keep you going. Um, but I also like the way that, yeah, the, it's split into two parts. So you've got your first hour that builds up the characters, builds up the, the what's going on, to then the second hour, where it's just all the action adventure of us following these guys going around. Um, but there's that little bit with the three-month montage. You know, it is a montage, and it is weird to throw it into a movie. But they do it well enough and explain the science well enough that you buy it. Yeah. So that when the train's ready, you're like, I'm ready. Are you ready? Let's fucking do this <laughs> fucking shit. Um, I love Stanley Tucci in this movie. I think he is just brilliant as a douchebag. I think he does... All of his acting really well, except except the lovely bones. I fucking hate him in the lovely bones, okay? Um, and he bounces off well with everybody else. He bounces off well off of Serge or Del Roy Lindo's character, you know, Josh Keyes. You know, he even has that little thing with Beck where he's just like, don't. One compartment and it will kill us all. And he is right. And it's harsh that we have to watch people die. But then he, he redeems himself where he's sat there with the nuke, smoking a fag in the corner <laughs> at the core of the earth. Um... Like some of the sequences uh, where the, the train itself, it's quick, it's fast, it's probably not edited brilliantly, but it's just enough for the science scientist in me to go, man, I wish I was on there, or at least I wish it would, it does exist. Um, also, Christopher Pike's death. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, yeah, right, he should have floated, but he might as well put his thumb up. <laughs> I've got a few favourite scenes cool. from the film. Uh, the first one for me is the space shuttle landing. Yes. Uh, I thought yes. the uh, the action, the the shot use, the edits was really, really, really good. Uh, really built up that, that adrenaline mm -hmm. uh, as we watch it come down and narrowly avoid as we see the wings get taken off yeah. as it slowly stops in front of the scaffolding. I was like, I love that sequence. It was really good. Yeah. Uh, the basic science class. You know, just uh, him explaining to all the generals about what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with the with the with the basically the sun just melting the earth. I was like, yeah, it's it's effective. You know, it just it gets the message across, uh, even though it's it's maybe dumbed down. Yeah, like the visual of it, it, it works. Uh, I really like the the montages of them preparing the ship and getting everything built and having the failed experiments yeah. and just the odd line here or there. Just keeping the characters building up the teamwork essentially before the adventure. Really like those moments. The Rome lightning storm, yeah, of course, the Colosseum exploding. The effect looks ropey now, but yeah. the you know it gets the uh, it gets the the message across. And I do like that they did build a forty foot. Uh, model. Yeah, it does. So, it, 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 so when the model's exploding, you're seeing the debris flying everywhere, that's cool. But of course, it's the CGI they put in on top that kind of takes some of it away. That, that's the weirdest thing is that I was sat there watching that sequence and I'm just like, this is still model work on yeah. top of computer generated, but the computer generated isn't It's there, distracting it. So yeah. we've got to have the model work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the empty space moment where they fly into space and then just crash. Yeah. Now, scientifically, they should probably have become weightless at that moment in time instead of hulking forward like they do, or 
forget to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the whole sequence in there, when you see the when they turn the lights on, I'm like, wait a minute, again, why does this train have lights on the front? <laughs> yeah. Like, there's no windows. They're like, not looking yeah, out the front at any point. Yeah. Oh, daft. <laughs> but anyway, the whole it's the Crystal Canyon. Yay. <laughs> Sergey's death. Uh, I, I thought, even though you thought it was a bit too long, I thought it was just right. It captured the drama, the heart, the the reaction uh, really well. Um, I also want to say, I thought, I mentioned Hilary Swank earlier as being really good in the film. Yeah. I really liked how she sold her reaction when she found out that her, her friend and mentor has just died when he's flatlined. Yeah. I thought her reaction there was solid, believable. Yeah. But then the next scene when she's talking to Josh and she starts doing the, oh. yeah. yeah, she hides her face and I'm like, <laughs> She, she like it, it was like crocodile tears you yeah know? It, it wasn't genuine or real <laughs> so i was like were they told to tone this bit down because it's too or much was or... It, or was it added in because they didn't I was like, think... hey, like you're a better actress than this yeah like this is a, a letdown here but I, I kind of felt with that sequence as well that she was unhappy that he died but she was like finally i've got my I'm, shit. Free. <laughs> I'm free yeah yeah <laughs> I also did like the scene where, I mean, Aaron Eckhart really gets to, to stretch, I guess, his acting here a little right. bit. It's yeah. his most worked up scene where he comes in and he goes, I was two inches from him. Yeah. I could have saved him. And and her response being, look, I already let him die once when I do didn't dodge the diamond. Yeah. And the second time when I didn't let you open the door. So please, like, give me some space here. Yeah. Uh, so I thought that both of them really, really performed quite well there, too. Braz melting uh, to to sep you know to separate the ship parts uh, again. It's a bit daft uh, because, in all honesty, he would have disintegrated right away. Uh, but again, the music swells up, and you're with him on this walk yeah. uh, as you're watching. He's leaving his melted footprints behind uh, as he gets there. Great, great stuff. And of course, Stanley Tucci sat there smoking a cigarette as the nukes about to go off as he starts cackling maniacally as he's it's over, it's all over. Great, great, great moments. Yeah, Ian. Do you recommend the core? I do recommend it, but I only really recommend it to people who like disaster movies because that's really all this is. Like Gary said, you could take the science apart with a fucking toothpick, you know, and you could also take apart the acting if you really wanted to and the special effects and the script and the story and things like that. But at the same time, while I was watching this, you know, I thought, man, I really want to watch Earthquake. You know, I really want to watch Sunshine. I really want to watch Armageddon. I've started to go through a list of all these different disaster movies that I'd like to watch because the core makes me in that mood. You know, Geostorm's so fucking stupid. Moonfall. A moonfall, for God's sake. But, you know, back in 2003, somebody went, hey, what happens if the Earth's core stopped? And I think it, I did read somewhere it did happen recently. Well, in... January of this year, 2023, scientists have reported that the Earth's rotation has slowed down. Maybe even stopping. Maybe even reversing. But. Now, however, we've not seen any abnormal effects yet. Or have we? I don't know. <laughs> Are we in trouble? I don't know, mate. <laughs> well, I know this film's in trouble. I got a list. <laughs> it's got a list. I very rarely do this unless the film's really got problems. I have a list here of 10 things that this film just made me need to get pen and paper and write some shit down. One of, if not the most scientifically inaccurate film of all time, <laughs> The Core. Number one, Earth's atmosphere wouldn't disappear within a year after the core stops rotating. Okay. And a small EMP device cannot stop the core's rotation. It is akin to using a vacuum cleaner on a thunderstorm. <laughs> the EMP, the destiny, apparently, yeah. uh, would have penetrated thousands of miles of rock. EMP will not travel through the rocks. <laughs> There is no way Destiny could have triggered what caused the rotation to stop. Well, that's why they had that big hole. I don't know how pretty that hole was, man. Did you see the lights? It was all pretty in there. <laughs> Birds can still migrate without the Earth's magnetic field. Well, pigeons don't migrate, though. No, that's, exactly. That's, so they're, they're stupid. They were just mm -hmm, being stupid mm -hmm. that day. Earth's magnetic field dissipating wouldn't cause solar microwave radiation strong enough to melt the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh. Also, the cars would have melted long before the bridge did, it and would, so would the people would have been puddles. The way the tires just pop yeah. first, and the cars just sat there. Right? Yeah, these giant steel beams are like... <laughs> like, the guy was just sat there. He wasn't cooking inside his car, no. which would be like inside a microwave. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Cavities... And giant amethyst crystals 
thousands of miles down would be impossible due to the immense pressure. It would all just be crushed. Also, there is no carbon in the Earth's mantle, so no giant diamonds either. <laughs> Humans cannot walk around and operate ship parts in a 9,000 Fahrenheit environment. You would have been burnt to a crisp and dusted in seconds. No matter if you wore a suit that could withstand half of that, you would still be dust. Oh my god. Some suit he has. Like, where do we get those? No ship can convert energy or heat into energy to propel itself away from a nuclear blast. Also, they emerge between two tectonic plates near Hawaii, which doesn't have any. <laughs> it's... <laughs> It it's, it's just, just doesn't, like, and, and also, the Mariana Trench, where they fall into, is not the softest part. As a matter of fact, Hawaii, where they emerged, would have been the best place to go in. <laughs> Fucking midgets, man. <laughs> Remember, he's recommending the thing, too. <laughs> Oh, the, the dive spot at the Mariana Trench. Yeah, there we go. Crust is thicker there. Best place would have been Hawaii. That was number yeah. eight. Number nine. The US Navy find the Virgil crew and rescue them in moments. Did they hire international rescue? Because they were there and managed to get them out of 800 feet of water. Attached salvage cables. The divers shown there are not deep sea divers. Plus, how did they deal with the decompression? <laughs> it's impossible. For the Virgil crew to radio contact the surface. Again, EMP, electrical signals. They're not going to get the freaking internet <laughs> at the core of the earth. <laughs> oh, shit. I can't even get the internet when I go for a freaking tunnel. Yeah, let these guys in 2003. I highly <laughs> recommend the core. <laughs> it's a personal favorite of mine. And I've enjoyed this film. More and more each time on a subsequent viewing. The premise is fascinating. The idea of the Earth getting fried due to its magnetic field being disrupted is frightening. And the characters assembled to prevent this are likeable and entertaining. Yes, the science in this film is dumb, it's absurd, or it's straight up nonsense. And it may ruin your suspension of disbelief, which is a shame unless you can find the humour in that. So... It's not very realistic, but I really liked the characters. Stanley Tucci was a great asshole. Aaron Eckhart was decent and Hilary Swank was equally effective, apart from a few, you know, phoned in moments. The effects vary. Some CGI looking 20 years old is looking dated, but the story and your investment and immersion will carry you past any wonky looking CGI. The music by Christopher Young is a real highlight. Great action beats, awesome sense of wonder and dread, with some real superhero-type crescendos before sounding like Hellraiser again. Legendary editor Terry Rawlings stitched this film together with great pace and timing that I feel like the core is the core blueprint template distilled down to nearly perfect as an action disaster film. So, yeah. High recommendation from me. Despite all the bad science, very enjoyable, highly entertaining. So give this one a watch. Earth has a deadline. Thanks for watching off the shelf reviews. Side